There's a, a place on the internet called 4chan, and it has a characteristic of being both ephemeral and anonymous, meaning that posts are made, text images, and they are attached to a truly anonymous identity. There's no particular way of finding out who it is. And there's an ethos of, having, of not trying to tell people that you are somebody. And it's on these boards that have a finite number of potential posts, and then once the board is done, the board is done, and a whole new board has to be created. So there's an ephemeral and anonymous character to this place, which is to say it's really close to the essence of the kind of stuff that gives rise to this religion or this decentralized network I'm talking about. And October of 2018, I think? No, 2017, some posts showed up. And that board has all kinds of crazy shit on it all the time. It's sort of known for just being crazy shit all the time. But some posts showed up that claimed to be uh, having a particular inside knowledge about what was going on in a time frame, by the way, where what was going on was quite confusing to a lot of people and had a, an aesthetic of asking questions, provocative questions, as opposed to giving answers and telling stories. And mimetically, remember this idea of the red religion identifies and upregulates things from the bottom up. Um, this kind of worked. Some attention was paid. Some people seemed to think that was cool and it got disseminated. And then some more posts showed up. Now, of course, you can't ever prove that there's actually the same person or group of people. That's the whole point. It's anonymous. But the same aesthetic was used, and so some attention was paid to it. And then it got bigger and bigger, and then it got kind of big in that very small, well, in that subcommunity, this small portion of the Internet. And then there was some pair, all kinds of craziness started to happen, and it began to percolate out more broadly. It started getting called Q. Uh, anon is just a term that refers to the fact that 4chan, the chans, are anonymous. Um... And then a, a layer, a penumbra, started gathering around it of interpreters and upregulators and people who are trying to make their own name on the basis of this meme and try to turn themselves into internet celebrities on the basis of something else. Twitter followers, YouTube channels, begin to build around it. And if you look at the center of it, the thing that was going on in the chans, there was in fact, in the center of this stream of questions, a narrative or set of narratives, answers to questions that were beginning to form. But notice the interesting invert Instead of it being built around answers and narrative that was giving you the answer to the question, this is what happened here. It's actually built around questions that opened up and generated an arbitrarily large, like a vast panoply of narratives. Like the, particularly for the first six to nine months, it was hard to explain. Um, epistemologically unbound, like what could be true wasn't even centered much less what was true, right? So the number of stories that were being created was vast. It was a huge uh, foam of narrative. And since then, over the past six months, kind of like religions do, it has begun to become more orthodox. There's more of a, here's the story, and has a counter-narrative feel to it. Um, so that's QAnon. So the place that I think is most interesting is not its mature and one might say sort of desiccated modern current form, but rather what was going on in that first year or so, the, the point where it was exploding. And if you look at that first year or so, it looks insane, like almost schizophrenically insane. The number of things that were being proposed and the way they were being proposed and the rate at which change was happening was not the kind of thing that happens in meritocratic hierarchies and could never possibly have been handled by a single mind. But it didn't fly apart. It actually held and gathered a meaningful amount of people who put their energy and time into it. And while the signal-to-noise ratio was pretty low, and the noise is high, there was, in fact, also meaningful signal. Like, real stuff was figured out, and actually real predictions about future conditions that were more accurate than was coming from CNN were also done. Not that hard. I mean, it's a low bar, but in any event, it actually happened. Now, the proposition that I'm making, which could be wrong, right, but the thing that I found most interesting is that in something like QAnon, you're actually witnessing an even more fundamental version of the natural form of the collective intelligence that is bound to this new media environment. So if you look at the IDW, the IDW is a little bit like what happens when the churchly structure becomes a little, like, takes it, puts it, lets its hair down, you know, chill out, you know, be a little bit more flexible, be a little more open-minded. Um, you know, come down, whereas QAnon's coming up. And so if you look at both of them, you say, okay, well, what's the distance between them? That distance 
That's the distance that needs to be covered for the religious function, the new decentralized collective intelligence to close the gap. Right? When something like QAnon, something with that much flat, spontaneous, self-organizing capacity is able to generate a level of coherent thinking that the IDW has produced, well then, we're on kind of the other side of something. And if, if QAnon is the first manifestation of a new collective intelligence, what do you think the next one might look like? I should mention, by the way, I don't think it's the first. Um, Bitcoin, for example, is also a manifestation of the same basic driver. But it's uh, notable and obviously very early. So I'm, what was the question? What's next? Yes, if it's an early collective intelligence, what, would, what do you think the next one would look like? And will it be even more virulent than QAnon has been? It will, by definition, be more virulent than QAnon. If it is not more virulent than QAnon, it is not the next one. Um, now, there's going to be an intermezzo with lots of experiments are going to be tried around the horizon. And if you look at the QAnon horizon, there's lots of different ways of thinking about it. Like, do you think about it as a really powerful psyop? Do you think about it as a really powerful propaganda device? Do you think about it as a really powerful way to gather a lot of people to do your bidding by manipulating them? Or do you think about it as a really interesting new way to do collective intelligence and sense making? Right? There's lots of different versions of what might happen inside that space. And I would actually be surprised if we haven't already, if, if call it the children of QAnon, haven't already happened mm. in the, call it the bad side. Covertly, there's likely already been a number of different experiments trying to figure out how to extend whatever the hell happened there into some new kind of effective tool in the war on sense making. Right? So in the war on sense making piece, I'd be surprised if we haven't seen something um, that is learned from QAnon. On the sense making side, like how do we actually make sense together piece? The most important part is going to be some level of epistemological maturity. That's going to be the decisive factor. And what I mean by that is being aware of how sense-making happens. Being conscious of how your own sense-making has happened, how you're showing up in terms of sense-making. And then being mindful and deliberate and intentional about how one might go about collaborating in a decentralized, bottoms-up, experimental fashion that has a good epistemology behind it. I think that's the decisive factor. So while there may be some, uh, <laughs> it's quite funny actually, if you, use, if you use the blockchain as an example, remember you had Bitcoin, they had this kind of cascade of Litecoins, altcoins, they were more or less Bitcoin Junior, like variations on the theme, but they weren't that interesting. And then had Ethereum, which was actually a very, like a whole new kind of idea. So there may be kind of altcoins in the QAnon space, but the next thing, the next real decisive innovation in that space is going to be something of this sort, something that has a self-awareness to epistemological capacity and is bringing that into its design. And do you think that will emerge from the chans, from the same place that QAnon hmm. came from? That's a very good question. It is not particularly likely, but it is not impossible. This is because the chans are a highly chaotic and very open environment and are in fact capable of absorbing novelty at a relatively high rate. The individuals who typically spend time in the chans have a relatively immature epistemological foundation and so as a consequence will not naturally be attracted in this direction. But if it does gain traction, it can grow. Because there has to be certain characteristics of the space where a collective intelligence could be created and that doesn't feel like Twitter, it doesn't feel like Facebook, it doesn't feel like... that. What are the minimum? What what kind of space is required for that collective intelligence to evolve? I mean, the chance is a particularly is a particularly interesting right. petri dish. So you're you're provoking me into having a little bit of a, a dialogue around the nature of how the characteristics of a medium 
give rise to certain kinds of collective intelligence at a, a detailed level. So for example, you can compare the chans to Tumblr and notice the distinctions and notice how identity forms in Tumblr and notice how um, social currency shows up in Tumblr and notice how identity forms in the chans and how social currency flows in the chans. Um, they're different, right? Their characteristics at a low level are different. Reddit, different. Uh, Facebook, different. And there's the difference between what happens when you have a like button and you don't have a like button. Even when you have a like button that has the ability to do hearts and smiley faces and just a thumbs up, right? There's, these minor differences actually make a difference in terms of how collective intelligence naturally forms in a space. So the question you're asking is actually quite profound. What might be a kind of space that is conducive to this form of collective intelligence. And the first thing that comes to mind is it will almost certainly not be purely virtual because the kind of thing that we're looking for is not available intrinsically in the kind of ephemeral virtual weak links connections that can happen on the internet in disembodied communication. So, plausibly at least, we're looking at something which is a RL-VR combo. Something where you actually have embodied relationship. Real life virtual reality combo. <laughs> Sorry, yes, real life versus virtual reality combo. Um, that's able to have the bandwidth of interaction to explore epistemological novelty well and find ways to achieve collaboration, achieve effective uh, collective intelligence in a space of extremely high epistemological liminality. Then that can be extended through virtual means. But it seems to me plausible very unlikely that something like this can be formed in a highly virtual environment. And certainly unlikely for it to be formed first. Like it might be copied. Once the basic notion perhaps has been generated, you might see it copied. To use software as a metaphor, if you think of, let's just make QAnon version 1.0. It's not, but let's just normalize there. If you look at, say, version 1.5, I can see something that's, that would happen in the domain of the rationalist uh, epistemology, which would have game theory as a primary basis and therefore would be a, in allegiance with the, the blockchain community. And that would be able to achieve a very high level of collective intelligence through virtual channels. You might even consider that it would be a, a perfectly viable version too. And it would have a mature epistemology that would be able to be reasonably functional in the new place. So it wouldn't have a evolving or novel epistemology, but we have a mature one that would be effective in the context of decentralized collective intelligence. A little bit like Sesame Credit, if you know what I'm talking about, the, the Chinese social currency structure. Topologically, these two things would be roughly identical. And so what you would end up seeing is a potentially very rapid proliferation of a new form of collective intelligence that could, by the way, quite, quite intelligent and effective. But it would, it has a finite lifespan would actually achieve a closure and collapse event in probably a relatively rapid time, like maybe even years, almost certainly decades. And I th by the way, I feel exactly the same thing about what's happening in China. So I think China is going in that direction and you should expect to see a significant increase in collective intelligence followed by a collapse, difficult to recover from collapse, by the way. And so to the degree to which you see something like that emerge in the, um, called the analytic tradition, the blockchain crypto space, 
decentralized, but trying to figure out how to make sense from that direction, you would see something of that same sort. It would have an S-curve. The S-curve would have significant, it would be a hell of a lot better than the blue church. It would win a lot of ground, but it would have a natural end and collapse in its life cycle for reasons that I can explain if you'd like, but that's sort of the first sense. You mentioned in passing the other day that even in Hollywood, there's a sense. I mean, there's a there's a sense that a lot of us have that we're kind of running out of either novelty or running out of um, like all the possibilities are being played out in almost every single medium simultaneously. Yep. Um, is that true? I mean, it just seems like watching Hollywood films now that they're, they're increasingly derivative. There just seems to be we're going in increasingly smaller circles. It's cocaine. It's very simple. When you have a system that is designed fundamentally to maneuver people around by manipulating them at the level of their um, incentive structures, uh, particularly their neurochemical incentive structures, then what ends up happening is you, have, you get more and more competition for, for controlling you by your dopamine and serotonin response curves gets pretty narrow. And it has a half-life to it. And so I have to give you more. I have to give you more. It has to become more pure and more intense and just run that across every dimension. So it's that curve um, which, by the way, is the same, more or less the same curve I was just describing, but in a different domain, that we're witnessing in these frameworks. So, Hollywood, you know, every movie has to be more visceral, more melodramatic, and more intense in both of those dimensions. You know, we can't just have conflict on Earth, we have to have conflict in space. We just have conflict in space, we have conflict in space and time. We have to act, the entire universe has to be up for grabs. And it has to be up for grabs in the loudest possible way imaginable over as many hours as I can pin your ass to the seat so that the effect that you used to get by watching a guy on a table going like this lands. And it's just that, it's the cocaine effect. Um, or that's what I used to call it. And is that the same thing with social media? Yes. It's the same fundamental dynamic. And remember, it's a fundamental dynamic that's happening two-dimensionally, meaning it's happening in the sense of my ongoing addiction to Facebook, and it's happening in Snapchat's desire to move me from Facebook to Snapchat. So it's a co-evolutionary competitive dynamic to yank me around by my limbic system. And where does that go? That ends up playing itself out. Oh yes, absolutely, it's terminal. Um, it's either a big T terminal, meaning that it leads civilization to some sort of hard collapse and reboot, but just think a drug addict, just use that as the metaphor. You hit rock bottom, you either die or you have a moment of clarity and you know, start moving in the other direction. That's, that's where it goes.